he better get it together because he was expected to be our guy for 10 years, Jay, and it's, n- it's not looking like that. I'm going to bring somebody else in here to push him, and otherwise he's going to be on the streets. And like I told you, a lot of my family lives in Indianapolis. You love to hear that as a fan, right? Because you're yelling at the TV in that game against the Jaguars. You're like, yo, what's going on? This is a must-win scenario for us. Why are you tricking off the game? So now when you hear a guy like Chris Ballard come out and say that, you're like, damn right. Put him on blast and let him know if you don't come and you don't perform, then there will be other people in that same position that will give us the best opportunity to win. You That's gotta, what you want to hear. You got to think about it, Max. It's like anything, right? It's at the time that was the right decision, the best move that was out there. We couldn't get Matthew Stafford because the Rams beat us to the punch on that one and gave up more than we was willing to get. We saw a relationship with Frank Wright. So we said, okay, Carson wins Frank Wright. We spend less money. And we valued both of them as the same. We're not spending the money, the trade value, all that. We're not doing that for Matthew Stafford. In hindsight, they probably now said to themselves, well, we probably should have did it. Stafford was a lot you more know? expensive, mm-hmm. though. It was but two first. Yeah, it was more expensive. Yeah. But at the same time, there's a relationship yep. with Carson Wentz and Frank Reich, and I could give up less. Yeah, and I- a contingency is if we do this, they get that. da 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 There are two things with Wentz for me. And he had a nice bounce back season for the most part. But there are two things. Since his injury, and I was there that day at the Coliseum, he's tough as nails. Like, he completed a couple passes on an injury most guys are like, you know, you can't really play on. But the bottom line, and he's never really physically been the same since then to me. But the bottom line about Wentz to me, guys, I look at how a team performs for a guy consistently like I bring up Brian Flores team never quit no matter what and wound up winning a couple seasons winning records Carson Wentz just take a look at how the team responded to when to him under center versus someone else on the same team with the Eagles Nick Foles they win the Super Bowl well okay fine but Carson Wentz got him most of the way there guys the next season they were five and six dead in the water they caught fire when Foles came on, went to the playoffs, won on the road, almost won two games on the road. Look at uh, Jalen Hurts. The team wasn't mm-hmm. functioning. Then they seemed to want to play for Hurts. Even, even what's his name? The 40-year-old quarterback on one wheel who'd never been in the playoffs. McCown. So, McCown. Yeah. McCown lost to Seattle. Yes, he <laughs> did. But it was the same score that Carson Wentz lost to Seattle in the regular season, and McCown's not Carson well, Wentz. Look, the team, I don't see teams playing for the guy. It, it's it's something to be said in situations like that. There's no question about it. But because, as I always say, I can fix him. <laughs> I, can fix, I can fix him. That's what somebody's going to say. Even when they move on from Indianapolis from him and they decide next year that they're going to move on, there's somebody that says, he was the number two pick of the draft, man. Let's just kick the tires on him. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Because he's got some talent. He has talent. So, there's something there that made him the number two pick of the draft. He had a nice bounce back year. Let's see where it is in 2022 if he continues the bounce back or if he goes way back. Here's a challenge for 2022, 2023 for him now. If you're talking about the competition that he had with Nick Foles and look what that led to. You talk about the competition he had with Jalen Hurts. Look what that led to. Now you're telling me Chris Ballard is going to bring in somebody else, which I would do too, and say, hey, look, if you can't handle it, somebody else will. How will he psychologically handle that? Well, I think that's what Ballard is saying. What Ballard is saying to me is that plan that he had yesterday for the Giants to bring in like yes. Trubisky or someone to c- compete with him. What Ballard is saying is, look, Carson, you, got, you had everything you needed. You didn't get it done. Obviously, they're going to have to pay him. They give up a lot for him. They probably don't move on from him, but this might be an open competition now. We're going to bring someone in. You got to win this job. It's a a fake open competition. Yeah, because they want it to be him. It is fake until he crumbles, if he crumbles. No, no, but I'm saying. There's been history of him crumbling mentally, and that's what you start to think about with him, right? Like, okay, when somebody gives it to you and there's nobody behind you, you have an opportunity to do your thing. But the moment somebody's behind you, that shows a little bit of a pop. Like, he starts to get a little bit smaller in those moments. Well, a fake competition is we're going to bring him in to compete with you, put you on notice. Five games into the season, we'll remove you if you're not doing your job. So, it's like a fake – it's not really a – a real competition is – From the beginning, yeah. uh, Who's going to start? A real real competition is I'm bringing in a guy like a – I don't know, Marcus Mariota, and he's really going to share reps – 
along the way. You get two preseason games or a preseason and a half, he gets a preseason and a half. He takes one rep, you take two reps. That's a real competition. Yeah, I hear what you're you know? saying. But but it's it's almost like they're going to bring somebody in to light a fire under him to see if he can catch big flames. Is it going to light a fire? That's the question. You know what, though? Know. Is like, it going to light a Evan fire? Evan just got in my ear with the suggestion. The problem with Wentz is if there's a guy close to as talented as him, but the team responds better, he's out. Yes. Evan mentioned Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor can play. Tyrod Taylor, mm-hmm. like in a parallel universe. I mean, bringing Tyrod Taylor in? Yeah. Someone like that, right? Mm-hmm. In a parallel universe, like, like you know, if his career works out a little different, he's considered a franchise quarterback. I don't know if they're bringing TT in. I don't think so. He was just using it as a hypothetical. I'm just saying, example, oh, like you got to be, care- like, you gotta oh, be careful who you bring in because they might just take that's the That's what I'm saying, yes. I'm trying to think, who could you bring in that's out there that's not a young quarterback that could take the job? Mitchell Trubisky. But Mitch Trubisky probably going to wind up going um, wherever Somewhere Brian start. Dable goes to Fair. wind up being a starter other than Chicago. That's what, it, it, let's, that's let's, what I would do. Let's chew on this one. Throughout the show, figure out what we come up with. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.